Now let us derive an expression for the time period of oscillation of a loaded spring. Suppose you have a spring like this. One end of the spring is fixed, that is attached to a fixed pull, fixed wall, and the other end it is attached to a mass M. Now let this be the mean position. This line represents the mean position that is x is equal to 0. Suppose if you stretch this spring like this, if you stretch the spring like this, that is you are extending that mass from the mean position to a new distance x. What will happen? The moment you release the mass, this mass will come back to the mean position. Actually, there is a force acting which restores the mass to the mean position. This is called restoring force. But actually, this mass doesn't stop here. Instead, it will move further away from the mean position to somewhere here. That is, if you draw only the mass, the mass will be here, I'm just drawing this one, and mass will also be here. So it will oscillate between this mean position. It will go towards that side and also to this side. So there is oscillation for this mass. Now, what, what do you mean by the time period of oscillation of the mass? Initially, the mass is at this position. Let's call that as A. Then it went to the, travel to the mean position. Then it, and it traveled to the other side to a new position B, such that these two distances OB and OA is same. These two remains the X. X. This also is X. Now, from this position, it has to come back to the mean position and then to the point A. So the total time taken to move from the point A to that side B and to come back to the point A is called the time period T. Clear. So let's, before that, before finding the value of time period, we have to find an expression for the differential equation of SHL. For that, let the spring constant be K. The spring is having a spring constant K. Let's assume that spring constant, spring constant is equal to k. So what will what will happen if you extend the spring further? So we extend this mass further. Suppose if you stretch this spring, I'm just drawing this. The same spring, if you extend a little bit more or if you extend more, that is, it is very far away from the main position. So what will happen to this restoring force? Clearly, from your observation itself, you see that if you extend a spring further, the mass will come to the main position quickly, which means if you increase the x or the displacement, the force will also increase. So you can say that force is directly proportional to displacement. But remember, the displacement is towards right, clear. You are displacing the mass to the right, but the force is towards the left. So one is towards right and other is towards left. So you have to put a minus sign. So if you remove the proportionality, you have to multiply it with a constant. Here, the constant is spring constant. So F equal to minus Kx. Let's call that as equation number one. Clear. Now, according to Newton's law, we know force is equal to, according to Newton's law, force is equal to mass times acceleration. This is in accordance with Newton's law. F is equal to, but m into acceleration is actually, acceleration is equal to d square x by dt square or the second derivative of displacement. So, acceleration is equal to d square x by dt square. That thing you know because 
Acceleration is dv by dt, velocity equal to dx by dt. So, acceleration will be d square x by dt square. Let's call that as equation number 2. If you have doubt in this expression, there is a video I already uploaded. You can check that. I will put it in that link in the description below. So, 1 and 2, equation 1 and 2 tell about the force. So, they are equal. So, you can write m equation 1 equal to 2 implies m d square x by d t square is equal to minus kx or, or you can write d square x by d t square is equal to if you take the m to the right it will be minus kx by m or d square x by dt square plus k by m times x is equal to 0 and if you just consider the k by m to be some omega square let's take k by m equal to omega square therefore this equation become t square x by dt square d square x by dt square plus omega square x is equal to 0. So, this is the differential equation of SHF. We already discussed about this in, in a video before. If you, if you want to check that video, I will put it in the description below. Now, we must find the value of x which satisfy the equation or equation satisfy this differential equation or we must find we must find the solution of the this differential equation since this is a simple differential equation you can use the trial and error method for that let's take x is equal to some a cos omega t now we have to check whether x satisfies this equation if it satisfies the equation, then this one is a solution. For that, let first find dx by dt. dx by dt will be d by dt of a cos omega t. So that will be derivative of a. You, uh, if you find you want to deri derive this one, you can take this a out since it is a constant. Then the derivative of cos omega t equal to minus sin omega t into derivative of omega t is omega. So, this will be minus omega a sin omega t. Now, you have to find d square x by dt square. For that, you have to derive this one again d by dt of minus omega a sin omega t. So, that will be minus omega a derivative of sin is cos omega t and derivative of omega t is omega. So, that will give minus omega square a minus omega square a cos omega t. So, that is d square x by dt square. And if you substitute the values in here, we have d square x by dt square equal to minus omega square a cos omega t plus and for this one omega square x is equal to a cos omega t. Clearly this will cancel this one and the value is 0. So x is equal to a cos omega t satisfies this equation satisfies this equation. Therefore this is a x equal to a cos omega t is a solution. Clear. Now we have x is equal to a cos omega t. The solution of the differential equation t square x by dt square plus omega square x is equal to 0. But we already took omega square equal to k by m and omega equal to root of k by m. Let us call that as equation number 2. Now, just look at the equation here, x is equal to a cos omega t. Whatever be the uh, be omega t, it must be angle. Clear? This omega t must be an angle. Since 
this one is a trigonometric function so trigonometric function inside of this trigonometric function the, that must be angle or theta clear so this you all you know angular frequency omega equal to theta by t clear that is theta equal to omega t so this omega represents the angular frequency angular frequency clear the uh, omega must be angular frequency so that theta equal to omega t so since this is angular frequency you know angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi by t implies omega equal to 2 pi by t is equal to root of k by n clear if you take the reciprocal then you can write t by 2 pi is equal to you can also reverse here m by k so that will give the time period t equal to 2 pi root of k. Okay. so this is the expression for time period of oscillation of a spring of a loaded spring where m is the mass and k is its spring constant clear